So today we are going to begin with analysis of algorithm. So for solving a particular problem, you need an algorithm. Algorithm is basically a way you are approaching that particular problem and in order to solve that problem in an efficient manner, you need to write an uh, efficient algorithm for that particular problem. So you know, uh, you must have heard about the worst case time complexity, best case time complexity, and you know that uh, for a particular problem, it could be solved in a multiple manners of ways. So you must always seek out for that particular way of solving a problem that takes the minimum time complexity. So suppose you are given a problem that is you would have to find the sum of the first and natural number. So sum of first and natural numbers. So this is the particular problem that you have been provided. Obviously there could be many ways of solving this particular problem. I would request you to pause this particular video now and I would request you to solve this problem in your own language and uh, we would be discussing three ways of solving this particular problem and uh, you can compare your own and uh, you would know that which particular solution is the most efficient and uh, which you must do in order to reduce your time complexity. So uh, this is a particular problem. The first method of solving is that you must have heard of uh, arithmetic progression, right? So if it is given as 1, 2, 3, 4 till n, so this is basically my n natural numbers and I need to find out the sum of this particular uh, series. So it is always given as n into n plus 1 by 2. This is a multiplication operation. So n into n plus 1 by 2 would be giving me the sum of that of this particular series, right? So this could be a solution. So the method one would be if I have a function in which I have to find the sum of n natural numbers, I could just return n into n plus 1 by 2. So this is a particular way of solving this particular problem and method 2 can be we could iterate through all of these numbers and we could just add it to a particular sum variable so we can write the second solution as sum is equal to 0 and we can iterate a loop from for int i is equal to 1 i is less than equal to n i plus plus and I can just add i to this particular variable. So sum is equal to sum plus i. And in the end, I can just return the value of sum. So this could also be a function where I am initializing the sum variable as 0. And I am iterating through all of these numbers from 1 till n. And I am adding this particular i to the sum variable. And thus we are getting the sum of this particular series. Also, there can be another way or another method of solving this particular problem. That is method 3 can be. I can again initialize the sum as 0. And I can iterate through all of my uh, numbers that is ranging from 1 to n. So it will be the same loop that we have written here for int i is equal to 1, i is less than n, i is less than equal to n, i plus plus and for this I can iterate, I can keep another loop that would be iterating for i and I could increment the sum by 1. For example, I can do it like this for int j is equal to 1 j is less than equal to i j plus plus i can just increase the value of increment the sum by 1 so for example for i is equal to 1 it would be 1 and for i is equal to 2 it would be 1 plus 1 
for i is equal to 3 it would be 1 plus 1 plus 1 so this is how the operation should be performed and if the, uh, in the end we would be adding all of these to a sum variable so we would be in this method also we would be getting the sum of the numbers uh, that is ranging from 1 to n that is the sum of the first n natural numbers so these three methods are the way you can solve this particular problem uh, that is uh, if you run this particular code in different systems in different languages you would be getting different time uh, that is required to uh, run this particular code so if you are considering languages and if you are considering your system it is it is dependent on the uh, it is independent of the code then so for example a person who writes a bad code and if he has a faster machine or he writes in a language that is easily much easily compiled than other languages so even though his code is bad or his code requires more uh, is more time complex uh, has a higher time complexity it would be requiring a, a lesser time than a code suppose which has a uh, uh, of a lower time complexity so you can solve this uh, using uh, in order to analyze or, uh, so in order to analyze your particular algorithm we must make sure that it is independent of the language that you are choosing for coding and it is independent of the system that you are running your particular code in so uh, for example uh, so that is basically asymptotic analysis of algorithms so it is the theoretical analysis of algorithms where you are not considering the languages or any uh, system configurations and you are just looking at the code and you are trying to find out the time complexity of that particular algorithm that you are using to solve a particular problem. For example, uh, if you go to method 1, you could uh, represent, it, uh, represent it as a constant uh, so before that you need to know what is order of group what uh, so the term is order of group the algorithm is independent of uh, the, uh, this particular analysis is imp uh, independent of the language and the hardware configuration but it is dependent on the order of group what is order of growth? Order of growth is how your uh, particular algorithm uh, works when your uh, input size varies. For this, always the input size must be greater than equal to zero. And on increasing the input size, it would be uh, seen that how your particular algorithm is performing and how it is uh, reacting to a, uh, how it is operating for a much bigger test case. Right. So, for example, the first method could be written as, suppose this is fun one, the complexity could be written as C1, C1 is basically a constant, since here we are providing N, N can be any value, for example it can be 1000. So 1000 into 1000 plus 1 it divided by 2. It will always take a constant time as it is always performing the same operation in spite of the size of that particular test case. For, uh, so for suppose n is equal to 1, it will perform the same operation. For n is equal to 1000, it will also perform the same operation and in the same time uh, billion. Okay. So, the function, uh, the function 1 or the method 1 will always take a constant time for execution. Now for the method 2. In method 2, uh, since there is a for loop and it is dependent on the size of your n. So for example, if your n is equal to 1, the loop will uh, iterate for 1 time. If it is 1000, it will iterate for 1000 times. If it is much greater than that, it will iterate for that particular higher value. So as you will see that in method 2, the particular method is a function of n. So you can write that fun 2 is dependent on the n that you are providing. 
so it would be c to n and also there is a constant time uh, required for for example for declaring the sum variable for returning the sum variable these constitute of the constant part of your particular algorithm so you could also add a c3 to it so your fun to require c2n plus c3 because this particular loop is dependent on uh, the number of times this particular loop will be iterating is dependent on the size of n therefore it is uh, there is a c2n in your time complexity also uh, now for the method 3 you can see that we have a loop that is iterating for n and inside that loop we have another loop that is dependent upon the value of i so basically your this particular entire segment of code would be occurring for n into n plus 1 by 2 times because the sum would be incremented for n into n plus 1 by 2 times so you could write your fun 3 as has a time complexity of suppose uh, since you can see that n into n plus 1 by 2 would be giving me an n square and an n value so it would be c4 n square plus c5 n plus a constant value this constant value is again for suppose declaring the sum variable and for returning the particular sum so this is a constant variable and this part we are getting from the number of times this particular code is occurring, uh, occurring that is sum plus plus it is occurring for n into n plus 1 so we are getting this particular quadratic equation here that c4 n square plus c5 n plus c6 so let's just keep this in mind and uh, let's uh, start analyzing our particular algorithm. So for method 1, it was, our function was C1, that is a constant value. For method 2, that is our function 2, we were getting C2n plus c3 uh, and since the number of times the loop was iterating and for method 3 it was uh, c4n square plus c5n plus c6 so these are the three methods and uh, these are the time complexities or the functions on which the time complexity is dependent uh, these are the values for it. So let's just analyze for particular inputs. Okay. Let me draw a graph where let's take a case where uh, suppose the first method is run in a very slow machine and uh, the language is also uh, takes time uh, the language also takes time for compilation for example we are using python and suppose we are using a code to do processor for processing our particular code so suppose the constant value so this is a graph that is here is the time taken and here is suppose n that is the value of n n being, n being the test case okay n the value of n varies from 1 to any particular natural number you can go uh, lakhs crores you can go to that so you will be we would be just checking on increasing the value of n how is the time taken of uh, time taken changing for this uh, for the particular method 1 and method 2 okay so suppose c1 is being run at a a slower computer so it is taking a constant time of 10 milliseconds uh, for method 1 it would always remain a constant value and suppose C, uh, the method 2 is run at a much faster computer and is coded using C so since you know that C is a, a much more faster language than Python so C3 uh, suppose C3 has a value of 5 and uh, which is much lower than uh, the value of c1 since it is a faster computer 
and uh, C to N. So let's suppose C um, C two has a value of two and C five has a value of five. So our function now becomes two uh, N plus five. Since it's a linear function, so it would be starting from here. And suppose this is our function. Now we can see that initially our method two. So this was our function for method two. That is two N plus five. And this is our function for method one. That is equal to ten. Okay. So as you can see that after a particular period of time, this overtakes the uh, uh, initially our method two. Although you can see that it always returns a constant value, so it must have a slower. It must have a lower time complexity. But method two is in, uh, dependent on the uh, size of n, so it must have a higher time uh, higher time complexity. But since it is run in a uh, faster computer, so initially the value of uh, the for these particular test cases, it is uh, providing the output in a faster time rather than the first method. Uh, so in order to see that uh, for what particular value of n. Our method two is overtaken by our method one, which is a much better algorithm for solving this particular problem. Uh, we can calculate it using where two n plus five is greater than equal to ten. So this is a basic inequality equation. So two n plus five. So in order to find out when n uh, this particular function would be giving a greater value than ten. We could just uh, write this uh, particular equation, and on solving this, we are getting uh, n is greater than equal to five by two, so n is greater than equal to three. So this only takes in case where n is equal to uh, three, uh, where it, when n is less than equal to three, our method two would be performing faster than method one. So as you can see, if you write a better algorithm. It is independent of your uh, test case, and it would be performing at a much better time complexity as the uh, test cases changes. Okay.